Don't buy this coin without watching this video first. We just got our PCGS order back and uh, we got hosed on a few things and we're going to talk to you about them today in this episode. Uh, let's get this video started. So, we just got our PCGS order back and uh, we got a counterfeit coin in our submission. And you might be wondering, what is a counterfeit, a counterfeit coin? I just gave it away. We got a 1916 Denver back from PCGS and it was counterfeit. We bought it from a good friend of ours. I'm not going to name his name because that's not what we do. But uh, he didn't know about the mint mark. I didn't know about the mint mark, but the mint mark was added to the coin. And so we submitted, we had one, a coin already submitted, 1916D, to PCGS when we got this coin in. Um, and so I sent the one that we just bought into PCGS. It's, it's just chaos with what we're sending in. But when I sent this one in, it was off of PCGS, and then I got the other one, another 1916D back from them, and, a, and there was a counterfeit mint mark on there. Uh, someone basically poured a little bit of silver where the mint mark was, and kind of etched it together to make it look like a Denver. And I got that coin back a, like a month or two ago and it was counterfeit and uh, it really sucked. What, but the problem now is that once I got that counterfeit dime back, the one that we're talking about in this video uh, was also counterfeit. So I was sitting on about a thousand dollars in costs into this coin and I just got it back. But the guy was pretty good about returning it, but it was just uh, Definitely a learning experience that I want to talk to you guys about today. Give you guys some information on what to look for if you're looking for a legitimate 1916 Denver and not a legitimate 1916 Denver. But here's the mintage of it. If you don't know what a 1916 D is, it is the lowest mintage Mercury Dime. Very sought after in the Mercury Dime series and uh, yeah, it's a big coin. But let's talk a little bit about uh, the mint mark and what you should look out for. So. If you're going to buy a 1916D, uh, what you should really look out for is, is there a triangle in the center of the D? So, uh, you know, there's the outer workings of the mint mark, which is the D, and then there's the inner markings of the mint mark. And what you should look for in the center of the mint mark is kind of a triangle. I'm going to include a photo of that right now, just to give you guys an understanding of what to look for. Um, but, like I said, there are a lot of ones that are added to 1916 Phillies to make them look like 1916 Denvers. So I'm also going to show you guys a few mint marks that are not legitimate. And that will give you guys kind of a frame to look forward to and understand when you're looking at these in person. Because a 1916P is probably worth like 10, 15 bucks. But a 1916 Denver, even low grade, can go anywhere from five, eight hundred, fifteen hundred dollars depending on grade. So um, another thing that you guys should also understand is that if you're going to get one that's like Fair 2, AG3, G4, a lot of times you're going to be seeing the mint mark kind of worked in with the circulation of the coin. So you're not going to see one on the surface of the coin like a counterfeit one would look like. You're going to see one that's kind of worked in or, you know, over time the rim kind of gets circulated the most on, on, uh, on the Mercury Dimes. And you're going to see that mint mark kind of lower in elevation. Um, and what that means is when there's details and there's the fields of the coin. The details, you know, are the United States of America and God we trust, all that stuff. And the details are, I'm sorry, the background is the fields. The details, as it's circulated, are already elevated. But when they start to get circulated, they start to lower it. And it looks kind of lower on the coin or it looks like it's worn down. Um, and so when you're looking at the mint mark, with those lower grade kind of mercury dimes, especially the 1916D, like I said, it's going to be kind of already rubbed off on the coin. You're going to see that 1916D or the, the D mint mark kind of rubbed into the coin. You're not going to see it on top of the coin perfectly looking. And so, like I said, I'm going to show you guys the two kind of discrepancies between those um, and what to look out for. And that's really something that you should look out for when you're trying to buy these coins raw. Uh, and, and if you guys don't know enough information, like I didn't know enough information, always buy it in a holder, either NGC, PCGS, and Annex, because they do a great job. 
And if you're trying to actually buy one and you're on the edge about it, try to write us. We can help you out in any way possible. And if you're going to buy one raw, always buy one from someone that's reputable. The ones that we got back that were counterfeit, both are dealers that didn't know too much about them, but they were happy to give us a refund back for those. So that's something that you guys should understand. Um, work with great people in the space that will give you a refund if they screw up. But let's get this video started a little bit, show you guys some coins that we got in, and talk about the PCGS submission. Alrighty guys, you just heard the story about the 1916D Mercury Dime. Yeah, need to learn more about it, need to understand it more before we submit more of them. Uh, definitely not a good thing. But let's take a look at this sub today. This is a 19. 40 Denver Mercury Dime graded AU58 by PCGS. Uh, this coin has a lot of nice rainbows on the obverse. Really hard to pick up here, but almost like galaxy toning. Um, that's why I kind of sent it in. I like how it's AU58, not MS61 or 62. So uh, yeah, it's just just an interesting, beautiful coin. Not really going to send it for AU58 plus just because there's already two in that grade. When you're fighting for a registry registry set. Uh, for every man set, you kind of want to have the only one to make it worth it, and this one would be the third if I if I went for it. So I'll probably pass on that coin um, in terms of reconsideration. So that one will be on the website available for you guys. This one's kind of a weird one, downer for me. Uh, this is a 1922 Denver. Um, I thought it was an OD, and you guys might agree with me here. Uh, when you take a look at the obverse here, I, there's no recollection of any D that I can see, nothing at all, just. And, it, and the thing about, you know, no Ds is that they have a significantly weak strike um, on the obverse. And they can have either a strong strike on the reverse or they can have a weak strike on the reverse. And so they grade this a G4, weak D, which I disagree with wholeheartedly. And I'm going to check in with a few other people about it. Everyone said it was a, it was a no D. So when I flip over the coin, guess what? Very, very strong reverse here. Um, and you know, a lot better than a good four. I mean, there's just so many details about the coin. It's not rubbed down. And that's what you're going to kind of see on a no D or a 22 D and they graded this a G4. Very confused. Don't know what to say about this coin. Um, and yeah, it's going to take some time to figure this one out. Hopefully we can get it in the holder that I think it deserves. I still have to do some research on it evidently, but here's a cool story on this coin, 1950. Uh, Franklin Half Dog, MS65 FBL. I picked this one up in, I think, in Ohio or in Pennsylvania in a kind of like a thrift store. Bought this for like, I think, 20 bucks or something like that. And I thought it had a shot at FBL and 65. And I think it was like $175 and 65 FBL. And so I wanted to give it a shot. Main worry on this coin was the luster, but I think the reverse luster really kept the coin. Uh, up and made it a 65 FBL. Very happy about this coin. Uh, you know, grading on Franklin's are getting a little bit better. If it did have a little bit more luster, I think it could have 66, but nonetheless, still a good outcome on that coin. Here's one, another head scratcher here. This one is uh, a 1913 Buffalo Nickel, graded, uh, you know, PV or sorry, corrosion removed. Still don't know where that is exactly. But I'm thinking the luster was kind of missing in a certain part of the coin. And that kind of led them to say that the corrosion was removed on it. Uh, I don't know. I'm still trying to learn about corrosion. That's probably one of the most difficult things to understand and learn. I have a few coins that have corrosion issues that I've sent in. And so over time, definitely going to try to figure out what's the deal on this coin. It was probably in the hair or something like that. Someone used a tool or something, but... I like the coin, sad it came out that way, but let me show you guys a few coins that we got in this past few days. Take a quick minute in this video to thank all the people that have helped us out, especially picking up some coins these past few days. We have a few guys that have been picking stuff up ever since we went to Trent's house and showed you guys a few raw coins. You guys have been picking them up like crazy. We are so thankful to all of our, uh, you know, all the people that visit our website, kushacollectibles.com. If you guys are enjoying today's video, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the coins so far, and subscribe if you're new. New videos coming out every single week, uh, three times a week. We plan on doing a few fun episodes next week, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Now let's get back to the coins. Starting at the top left with this nice 1928S. 
Walking Liberty half dollar. The reason why I purchased this coin because it was a lot of a, it was a better date, especially in MS. It could be a few thousand dollars in MS, but I wanted to find something that was affordable for someone that has a nice Walker collection and wanted to add one to theirs. I know this coin's probably like 900 bucks or something like that, but it's just, you know, when you're working with key dates, sometimes it's just easier to move them and easier to offer them because it's not like a 43 or a 44. Uh, it's just something that you don't see every day. And handling coins like this is what we really like. And also handling everyday coins that are super original like we've been talking about in the previous video. Here is key date Washington quarter 1932D. It's in a VF30 here, and you know, I like the coin because it, it doesn't really have too many issues with it. It's just an average circulated key date 32D. And uh, West Coast Varieties on Instagram really hooked us up with a few coins. We're we'll showing a few of them off here today, but I think all the ones that he sent me really would cack and are really just nice eye appeal coins that he sent in. Has a great eye and loves varieties on coins. Here is one he also sent us. This is a 1892 Colombian half. Still has some nice remaining luster on the coin. Does have a little bit of circulation on the high points, but you know, just a, a beautiful, affordable. Uh, I like kind of the little bit of character that it has as well. Still has the underlying luster. Just a beautiful Colombian half dollar. Thank you, West Coast Varieties. He's gonna. I'm gonna show you guys one more coin here that he sent me that I might want to keep. This is a 1936 Cleveland uh, half dollar, and it's a commemorative, as you guys know. And just take out the toning on this obverse here. I just don't see too many with toning like this. And it was probably came from a board or something that it was kind of held in for a few years. But waiting for the true views on this one, it's going to be exciting to see. And, uh, you know, we've been trying to uh, assemble a commemorative set that's toned and beautiful and affordable. Some I've had to pay up for, but this one I didn't have to pay too much up for. So, uh, you know, West Coast Varieties, you know, coming through with a few coins. Instagram is a place where you can find a lot of great stuff like this. And our website, GushaCollectibles.com. Like I said, though, pretty neat piece. And here is one of my other favorites from the videos uh, today. This is an 1888S um, Morgan Dollar. Pretty tough date. But as you can see, the luster on the coin is beautiful. It is a San Francisco mint coin, so you can see that on many of these. But just a, a stunning coin, especially in an MS63 grade. I think that the, this one really would receive a CAC sticker if I waited uh, another few weeks. But it's just something that I want to offer to you guys as just a beautiful piece. A nice Morgan dollar. Uh, can't go wrong with stuff like this. And here is the last coin I want to show you guys in today's video. This is a 1947 Denver Walking Liberty half. It has some kind of crusty toning on the obverse here. It is CAC approved and it is in a thicker holder as you guys can see. And when you flip over the coin, this is kind of why I bought it. It has some nice rainbows right by the United States and kind of that uh, just to the left of the coin there. Just a phenomenal piece. I'm, I'm very happy with this. Walkers are pretty hard to find with toning so Whenever I can get my hands on something like this, I want to offer it to you guys. Uh, finding rare pieces that are also affordable is something that I like to strive for, especially um, when it's a nice walker like this one. But thank you guys for watching this video so far. Now let's roll it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts down below. What do you think about uh, the 1916D and what you learned about it? Subscribe if you're new. All those things are really important for our growth as a community. Um, we are so thankful to have you here. If you guys want to check out any of the coins that we showed off in this video, AkushaCollectibles.com will have that for you. A lot of great selection over there, but I will see you guys in the next one.